breaking. Somebody ought to call them like they know him. Somebody ought to call them to your situation changes. Oh, Jesus. I love the name. I love the name. You ought to wave at somebody and say, ain't nobody like that. Ain't nobody like that. No, no, no. Somebody said, oh, taste and see oh, that the Lord is good. Oh, you can tell somebody, he's been good to me. He's been good to me. Real, 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 real. Hallelujah. 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 I don't need the singles. I don't need the hype team. 
because they can't go home with you. But when I get by myself and all I got to do is think about it. Yeah. 
Spare your life one more time to be at the hilltop, Holy Ghost parking lot. Amen. I say hilltop, Holy Ghost parking lot. You ought to be excited about that. Amen. We thank God for this opportunity. Uh, just uh, yes, just yesterday I had to choo, utilize choo, 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 my choo. cousin. And one of the hardest things I can do is to, one of my first cousins and, and to lay her down in the grave that she was going through what God has gave me today going through so much pain but in the midst of her pain she kept giving God praise in spite of the gloves in spite of the mass in spite of you can't work you can't get close to each other but one thing about it we are connected to Jesus and not the mass we're connected to God who controlled everything and I give you praise today I honor the man of God of this house Reverend Griffin Davis teacher my spiritual guide at the age of 10 down in the basement I can still hear the words of him preaching and I thank God for all the minister and all of you who come to give God praise also for those of you didn't know we had a young man receive another birthday I'd like to give Griffin Pastor Griffin Davis Jr. a shout out happy birthday to him amen bless his heart definitely want to give him the praise because God's been good. Amen. Uh, God has given me a word tonight, today. I may not do much singing, but I got my, but my brother Tori can handle that for y'all. <laughs> but uh, I want to just let God use me. I'm, I've, been, I've been through a lot. My sister has been tested with COVID-19. My wife is going second stage of cancer and just buried my first cousin. So you know I've been through a lot. Of people see you smiling. People see you grinning. People see you driving, but they don't know what you feel inside. God changed my whole subject. That, that last night when I was in the room, I was praying for God to not them let them see Joe, not them let them see Joe, Joe, let them to see the singing Joe. But Lord, you work through me because it's you that I am who I am today. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Before I go into the Word of God, I just feel that that that, uh, that, that need of uh, the people that's been suffering, people that's right now in the chair, right now in the car, don't even know if they're gonna eat tomorrow. They don't they don't, they don't even know what the doctor's gonna give them a report. But I'm gonna let you know, he's there. up in the morning and your wife is going through cancer and every day is the, the hair coming out every day she can't hardly walk I have to guide her to the restroom I have to rub her and then pray with her and she just say baby why me why me why why I have to go through I say I thought about Job that if Job would have knew that he was going through a test it would have never been a test sometime God asked the question could I sit on you? Will you be worthy to praise me through the midst of your pain? So though it may be somebody, they not be going through cancer, but they're going through 
through a situation that they can't get alone at home. They're going through a situation that the children is off the chain. They're in a situation that uh, they feel like they want to throw the towel in. They feel like that the more I praise God, the more I throw the Bible study, the more I get on my knees, I'm still in pain. This is where my wife was. I said, baby, no matter what pain that you got, the suffering of this world is nothing compared to the glory of God. I have to keep speaking that to them. And there may be somebody in that same situation. We're going to keep it our resolve. If you're going through something, just wave the hand. You ain't got to tell nobody. He is there. I told my wife. Oh, 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 I'm gonna fool you. You don't know what I'm gonna do. I just be led by God. I, I know uh, it's hot outside, but like I said, y'all pray with me. It's gonna be hard for me. Uh, still grieving, still worrying. But I found out the more you give God glory, the more you praise God. The more every Sunday the cars lined up. The more of you wave your hand. If I don't say nothing else in the sermon, remember you're always going to be a target for the devil. Because God knows that he loves us, but the devil don't want our praise. Amen. I'm not going to be very long today. I'm just going to touch up what God changed and gave to me. Amen. We, we know the story of Job. I'm just going to touch up a little bit. We're not going to read the whole paragraph. We already know the situation. How Job was a perfect upright man holy that god brag on and i tell people you can be saved and you can be in a situation you'll give god praise but the question is could god brag on you could god brag on you in your situation amen let us pray oh gracious father in the name of jesus god we come once again as your servant standing in the need of prayer 
Oh God, in spite of what's going on in the world in the White House, we know you still the source and not the resource. And God, as we are, our people of God is in these cars, Lord, and you know who's hurting. You know who's in pain in spite of the mass, in spite of the glove, and in spite of the distance. God, you know what they're going through. Lord, I ask you to speak on high. Give me a word for the people, Lord, that when they leave this parking lot, when they drive down this hill and go home, that their house won't be the same, that their life won't be the same. No matter the suffering that I'm going through, I'm going to trust in the Lord in spite of all. God, we ask these prayers in our son Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen. 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 If I can use for this a brief subject, just want to talk to you. Don't give up. It's just a test. God needs your praise and not your complaints. Can I say it again? Don't give up. It's just a test. God needs your praise and not your complaints. Amen. We know the story of my brother Joe. That Joe was an upright. A man that feel God, that man that God bragged on. And you know, it's another thing that that you know God, but the question I want to ask you, do God know you? Sometimes we praise God, we shout, but we ain't got no shout when sickness comes. It's all right to wave your hand, it's all right to do your dance and shout right now, let you wave your hands you if you praise him, but what do you do when you got a pink slip? What do you do when uh when the doctor gave you a report that your leg got to be removed. We go through these trials and tribulations. Well, will you stand and give God praise? The question is, have you ever had a time in your life when it seemed like the rug was just snatched out from under you and you didn't know what to do? Seemed like the more you do good, the more bad tried to come. Have you ever in your life sometimes was really good to someone and they turn around to be bad to you. You got the job in the new position, but the new position calls you to lie. It calls you to cheat. It calls you to put phony information on the receipt so you can just get a extension check. Oh, we've been there. We call ourselves sometimes. We think that's a bless, but all you're doing is trying to cheat on yourself. You're grabbing Paul and trying to steal from Peter. Have you ever had a situation that you had a soulmate that you thought he was yours? Found out later down an hour when she left the church, she was in arms with another man. Have you ever feel like you were just about to give up? And it seemed like everything that you did didn't work. But then again, God came in and blessed you and made his way good. When we look at Joel, I look at uh, God, why you want me to talk about Joel? And nobody want to hear nothing about that. That's an old story. Like talking to Daniel in the lion den, Paul and Sodom. You know, why are you taking me back to the old stuff? Seem like if we can go back to the old stuff. I remember when you did something bad in school. Mama didn't have to uh, go and see the principal. She didn't have to go and talk to the teachers. Some of y'all know the senior so Y'all know where I'm finna go at. All mama had to do is go to school and gave you that look. When mama looked at you, she knew right then she, he did it. He did it. He did it. I remember when you was bad in the house and you was had neighbors in your house and you didn't clean up your room and you didn't wash the dishes. Y'all know where we go. We don't go back there then. Now we got it all twisted. Uh, I'm going to pay you allowance to do homework. I'm going to give you allowance to be good. Uh, get in the corner. It's time out. Where that came from? I don't know about that. I remember, Griffin can tell you, when, when we craved up that, that when you did bad, whatever was in sight. You got hit with it. It could have been a boomerang shoe. Could have been a switch. I never forget, Mama used to tell us to go get the limb and bring it back. So we tried to get small. You know we tried to get small, Griffin. We we got the smallest limbs. But something about that old lady, her hands was moving like this. You could see she was shaking. She made her way to that tree and she got a good big limb. And then when she got it, she took her hands and went from the top and just went sliding on down. And all the leaves came out. Could I help somebody? Y'all don't want to go back, but we're going to go back. And when mama came in there, she didn't whoop you right then. Mama, my daddy and mama waited for you, but thinking it's all over. And then at the end of the night, we had to take a shower. And back then, I was saying that we don't take showers like then because my, me and my sister and my cousin, all of us was in the tub together. 
And then I hear the door open. I said, Daddy, why are you coming in? We trying to bathe. He said, yeah, Mama got the switch, and you thought I forgot what you did. And they gave us a whooping in the shower. And I remember I used to push myself, I used to push needle, and I was trying to get out, but Daddy was a big man, so he got up in the tub and just whooping me. So I thank God for them whippings. But the question I want to know, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Do you give up? Do you call the pastor? You may try to call Griffin. You may try to call your bishop. But sometime, I remember taking the lady to the hospital when she went there. She said, Joe, I can't come today. I said, why? She said, the doctor is sick. So my question is, sometime when you're sick, what you going to do when the doctor gets sick? You got to trust in God. And I'm trying to go somewhere here. You got to know no matter what the circumstance, Joe kept the faith. No matter how hard it got out of 10 children and all 10 died, he, he still trusted God. Still got on his knees and said, just in case my children were sin, just in case they did wrong. That's what mama used to do. Mama used to pray when you came home from the club. She knew you went out there. You know, we used to go to the club and get on our knees and say, Lord, 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 forgive me. And we go right back and do it again. We didn't know the principle of prayer. Well, we know the prayer of righteousness avail as much. God used the test and the trial to reach Job with his trials and hardships. In the beginning, God was not trying to get Job attention because he was already saved. Because he was already tuned up. So a lot of times we go through bad things. If you go down the street and you know you got May pops in you, you know your tire low and you know all this happened and soon the tire blow out, you say ain't nothing but the devil. No, you just needed a tire. A lot of times we got our gas needle, but it's blanking. We got these new cars now. They'll let you know when you ain't got no gas. But I tell people, when you see people run out of gas, they don't run out of gas because they don't have money. They run out of gas because they didn't take time to stop. But our God is telling you, what do you do when you don't know what to do? When we look at Job, God was not trying to get his attention because he was already tuned up with me. However, the story went on. Job seemed to forgot the nature of God, character. Sometimes the only way God can get our attention is through COVID-19. And through the trials, through your sickness, through going through hardships, going through the hospital. Because it's easy to give God praise when your rent is, is already due and you got your money. It's easy to give God praise. I'm looking at all these nice cars in his best rock a lot. And 9 out of 10, maybe all of them might be paid for. Well, how do you do when you don't know what to do? It's hard to give God praise when you got sickness in your home. When your wife is going through cancer and she's losing hair every day. And those footsteps are getting shorter. But yet you the man of the house and you the head and God called you to preach. What do you do? You keep trusting in God or you, or you complain. God is saying today to you, stop the complainers. And just give God some worship. Because if we worship God, we forget about our situation. We'll forget about our problem, but Job had a mind made up. No matter what happened, I'm going to trust God. The test, using the tests and trials, teach us why the storm of life has never pleased. They produce certain benefits in our life. Hebrews 12 and 11 says, for the time being, no discipline bringing joy, but seems greed and painful. But afterward, it yields peaceful, fruitful of righteousness. Theirs who have been trained by it. God allowed trials and tests in our life to mature us. Let me say that again because y'all might not get that. God allowed the pain. God allowed COVID-19. God allowed cancer. All the situation to mature us. God wants the possession not for a scene, but to benefit us to, to change our life. God used testers and trials to keep us. I just told him, my brother Johnson, and I want to know today if you ain't got to blow your horn, if COVID-19 would have never came, if we would have went into this crisis, would we be sitting in this parking lot? Would we would have came to church and said, Reverend Davis, we want to have church in the parking lot. No, we wouldn't have been doing it. We want to be caught up in the air condition. We want to be caught up with the fans and we want the good music playing. But seem like we're going to get more joy in the parking lot. I'm not, not even concerned about if we ever get inside the church. Because it's not in the building, but it's in us. 
when you still give God praise and we never go up on the elevator no more. And we like pushing the button, but ain't no more button now. You got to stand here on the parking lot and give God praise. God is getting more joy today because he has considered when you still praise him. If I shut the church down, if you still praise me, if cancer hit your body. I'm looking at this and God used this test to bring us closer. You got to understand that the word keep us means to look after us, maintain us, keep our faith. We do not need to forget the storms of life, they design of the Lord as meaning to bring him closer to us. Because God knows the world has been close. Never seen so many people praying from their ballparks. I've never seen so many people praying in Haiti. In the police department, they're scared now to even get in their car. They don't know if they're going to get shot because so many black lives have died. But I want to know I'm not caught up in black lives matter. I'm caught up that every life matter. Every soul matter. God concerned about everybody. Regardless of what we see on TV, we got to keep trusting in God. Job, why did Job, why did Job go through this test? Will we do the same for us in our times of testing? God's purpose in our trial is not to make us happy, not to make us rich, but to make it his. God is concerned about making him his, make us close to him. Not worry about how big your car is, but will you trust him? It kind of reminds me that we like to judge folks. I'm about ready to end this thing because I feel it, Griffin. I feel God moving right now. We try to judge folk. But let me leave this to you at Hilltop if I never get a chance to come down here on 30th Street no more. Your job is not to judge. Let me say it again. Your job is not to judge. Your job is not to figure it out. They know your business to figure it out. If my wife going through cancer, you don't need to know what stage she's in. You don't need to know what kind of cancer she is. That's why I don't entertain people because if you're a prayer warrior and you know what I'm going through, it's like the old people, they'll pray. They'll pray already. And they already know what to pray. The Holy Ghost will intercede on our behalf. So all you're doing is trying to be suspicious. But your job is not to figure it out. Your job is to lift up the burden. Sometimes desires your job is to lift them up and restore them to broken heart. You know somebody hurting, you know somebody just lost a husband, you ought to not be trying to be intimate with them. But you ought to give them the word of God. But sometimes we use our mind and try to satisfy our flesh. Remember this time, the strongest among us is always the one who smiles through silent pains. They cry behind closed doors. They fight battles that no one knows about. Don't let your ears speak what your eyes never see. Don't let your heart speak what your mind never feel. You got to understand that God feels you today. But the question I want to know, what do you do when you don't know what to do? How do you praise him <laughs> when you don't know what to do? I just want to ask this question. It's good <laughs> to have money. It's good to be able to ride in a fancy car. But if you don't have Jesus, you're still in a mess. It's all right <laughs> to have a mask on. I told you the other time I was here, I'd rather not have a mask than to have Jesus. Then I have a mask with no Jesus. A lot of people wear masks, but it's not the mask you need to be concerned. You need to know, are you connected to the God behind the mask? Oh, Lord, I'm glad I'm still standing. I'm glad I'm needing a God to help me. I don't know if I'm about ready to get down here. Y'all know I can't be caught up in all these cords. I know God is working it out. <laughs> yes, he is. I'm reminding. Y'all stay with me. Lift it up. I'm reminding. I'm reminding of an old farm. Because y'all going to pray with me. I'm trying to close. But, but I feel God moving. Oh, he's moving. 
I'm reminding of an old farm that had an old goat. Y'all don't play with me. This farmer, he will nurse this goat. Oh, yes, he will. Just like we do with our babies. Just like we do with our husbands. We love him, even though he may be doing wrong. Mama loved me when I was in the world. Mama loved me when I was singing in the choir. And I was going in the club that night. Can I get a real? But what do you do when you don't know what to do? This farmer, he had an old goat tied up in the backyard. Oh, Lord. One day, this farmer, he decided to go in town to get some supplies for his farm. You know how it is. When we leave our children, we can't leave the keys on the desk. Because they'll get in the car. We can't leave the stove on. Because they'll try to cook. And they don't know how to cook. But these things happen. But when you connect it, with God, God will, God will take care of you. This farmer, he went in town, but when he got back, he looked, he looked, I don't hear you, fella, he looked to the left, he looked to the right, he couldn't find the gold. Oh, Lord, y'all help me. Stay with the fellas. Y'all help me. Well, he went down to the old rugged river. He went down to the old farm. He said, Lord, 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 where's my goat? Where's my goat? The farm decided go away to well and when he went there there he was down in the well oh lord that's the same way i fell with my cousin she was on life support for two weeks but when i went in the hospital the doctor told me you got to get out of here we don't have this kind of shaming going up in this hospital you gotta move in it as your heart is not beating, you got to shake it as you're not breathing. But y'all know, no matter you on the machine, it's something, it's something about the ear. She heard me. Oh, you yes, see, and that's how I feel. I said, well, she died. I might as well praise her. But God said, no, I'm going to wake her up. When she got up, three days later, she called, she called, everybody, I'm sorry if I hurt you, I'm sorry if I disappoint you, she will make it peace, and when I look at the goat, he said, well, the least I can do is give him a decent burial, how we done feel that way, we leave the hospital, huh? with a report and we take the report home we don't trust god but the farmer said least i can do give him a decent bed he got a shovel i wish i had a shovel somebody bring me a chair or something just had a microphone bring a microphone he got a shovel bring me that microphone to him hold it got a shovel he scooped, he scooped, he scooped, but he kept the dirt pouring out on the gold. Every time, every time, he would dig, he would dig in the dirt. The gold has just enough. Come here, Lord. The goat has this enough to shake it off, shake it off. Sometimes, y'all saw me preaching. Hold up, hold up. Y'all saw me preaching. You saw me looking good. 
But see, sometimes we be dressed up and we be messed up. And I want you to know, I'm here to preach. But sometimes, just like that goat, I got just like that goat, every time people lie on you, shake it off, pack it on your feet. Can I get away? Long as I had the coat on, you would have never known that I've been hurting inside. I've been lying on, yes I have. If long as I had the coat, you would have known. Sometimes blood comes to my heart. Sometimes I have broken heart, but I still give God praise. When you look at this shirt, you will see I've been lying on. I've been mistreated, but when you give God praise, somebody lift their hands up and say, I've been lied on. I've been mistreated, but when you give God praise, when you give God praise, somebody say, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been hurt ripping. When you call me to preach, I cried all this week. But I told the Lord, I will serve him till I die. Come on and wave your hand. Come on and wave your hand. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Come on, give God some praise. How many ever been hurt? How many have been views? See, long as I had the jacket on, all you know is JoJo. All you know is Pastor Joe, the singing preacher. When I took the jacket off, you see, sometimes in life we are hurt. We ripped sometimes, we broken hearted. We've been mistreated, not by outsiders, but by church people. Many people in the streets are not there because they're homeless. Because I tell people it's one, two hurts that you can ever get in life is a family hurt and a church hurt. When people that post to pray for you, smile in your face and all the time they're trying to take your place. The mighty OJs call them their backstabs. Amen. I know the distance is six feet, but I just want you to lift your hands as before I go through this song, I want to pray that not only that we were about going in the church, but let the church be in us. Because if the church is in us, if we never open the doors, we never push the button and go up the stairs, we did something that God wanted to see all the time. Will you serve me if I shut the door down? Will you praise me? Will you still get in your car and wave and give God praise? I've been in the storm. <laughs> Too long. For my pastor, David. Rail, too long. Too long. Remember when you see your rail, I want you to tell him this.
me, please kill me. Oh! I need a little more time. I've been in the snow. It hurts sometimes to see my wife go through. I've been in the snow. Woo! Too long. Too long. You know, that song goes back to some memories of the legend ladies. Joel are gone from the mighty clouds of joy. Griffin, I remember when you had your group on the road and you had a chance to get on the stage with the Jackson Southern Hills and Willie Neal Johnson and the mighty keynotes, mighty clouds of joy, and God let you travel all over the world. And today, today, here we are standing in this parking lot giving God praise. I love the Lord. I hope I went too long, but I feel good tonight. I've been in the storm. Too, too long. Lord, too long. Too long. Come on and put your hands together. Well, I'm satisfied. We going home, though. He rescued me from, from sin and shame. If y'all don't mind, lift your hands up. Oh, I said If you're satisfied, come on and just wave your hand. I know you're in the car. Oh, Show! Sure. 